Hello everyone, I'm Sarabjit Singh. I work at Mass General Hospital and over the next 15 minutes we will take a look at the glossary of CT scan parameters. So this is how a typical CT protocol page looks like and where we input all these scan parameters. So why is it important to first of all look at the scan parameters and understand their definition? If we had just one scanner from one scan manufacturer, one model, it would have been easier that we had a set of scan parameters with a defined image quality. But since we have different scanners from different manufacturers, different models, it becomes very important that we at least understand the generic definitions of these scan parameters, especially when we are trying to compare across different scanner models or from different institutions or we recently learned about a new research study or a new protocol and we want to implement the scan parameters from one model to another. So it's very important that we understand the generic definitions of these scan parameters. So let's start with the CT localizer radiograph. A very simple uh, parameter which is uh, digital images obtained by moving the CT table through the scan field while the X-ray tube is stationary. And we have an AP view or the anterior posterior view here when the X-ray tube is positioned above the patient and we have a lateral view where the tube is positioned on either side of the patient which could be right or the left. And this localizer is used for deciding the start and the end location of the scan range and different vendors call them by different names as in Scout from GE, Surview from Philips or Scanogram from Hitachi, Topogram from Siemens and your Scanogram from Toshiba. Now here's an example of a PA localizer and we have a AP localizer and a lateral localizer. So Recently, we found out it's very important to have the right set of localizer, which could also affect your radiation dose. So it's very important to understand the definitions of localizer. Here's a, next, we move to the axial versus the helical mode. So axial or the step and shoot mode, it comprises of two alternating phases. One is the data generation and another one is the patient positioning. So data generation phase is where the tube rotates around a stationary patient to acquire a complete set of projections at the prescribed scanning location whereas in the patient positioning, as the name suggests, there is no data being generated during this phase, the, the patient is positioned to the next prescribed scan location. Then we have the helical mode, where data is continuously acquired while the table is simultaneously moved at a constant speed. And almost all the vendors call them helical, except Hitachi calls it volume mode. Now let's look at the tube current. Tube current is defined as the number of electrons flowing through the cathode filament per unit time measured in amperes or in, in CT as in milliamperes. And it's defined as the number of photons. It can also be defined as the number of photons coming out of the focal spot per unit time. This is the scanner output or the radiation dose and it's directly proportional to the MA. Now, there are a few terms which we need to be aware of when we talk about MA. One is MAS which is basically tube current multiplied by the rotation time in seconds when we are in a helical mode or when we are in the axial mode, it's tube current multiplied by the rotation time multiplied by the scan angle divided by 360 degree. When we talk about effective MAS, the word effective comes over here when we take MAS and divide it by pitch. And there's another term which is reference MAS. This is a very different term used in tube current modulation by one of the scan manufacturers where the user selects a reference MA for an average size patient. So it's different from the effective MAS. And then we have another term which is average MAS. It's the mathematical average of all or the actual MA values, which could be recorded from the DICOM fields or the PACs for a particular CT examination. Now, knowing MA is very important because as we lower our MA, uh, the image noise goes high and our dose falls down linearly. So as we can see, if we drop from 150 to 75, the image noise goes up. And the quant basically what's happening is when we lower our MA, the quantity of electrons from the tube is going down, and so is the photons, and that's why we have a higher noise in this image. Now let's look at the tube potential. Tube potential is defined as the potential difference between cathode and anode, which drives, this is the difference which drives the electron across the extra tube, and KVP affects both quality and quantity. We saw in MA, it affects the quantity of electrons, whereas the tube potential affects both quality and quantity. Here's an example where we scanned a postmortem scan at different KVPs, and we see as we lower our KP, KVP from 140, 120, 100 to 80, we see first of all the image noise goes up, so there is less quantity of electrons, and it also affects the quality of electrons, as we can see the image contrast has gone up with the lower KV. 
Next term we look at is the AEC or the ATCM which is automatic exposure control or the automatic tube current modulation. And this is an option available to the users to automatically adjust the tube current to patient size to attain a user specified image quality. So there are two terms, it's automatic although we give a user specified image quality in it. And then we have the different types of ATCM as an angular or XY where you modulate your MA based on your in the, in the XY direction and then you have a longitudinal or the Z axis which is along the Z axis of a patient and you have a temporal modulation where the MA is modulated depending on the face of the scan as in cardiac based by ECG. And once we plot all these scan parameters, uh, we can see that different types of tube current modulation from different vendors. It almost becomes a lookup table and it's very important that we, um, when we start comparing and let's say an auto MA from GE that we know we are comparing a longitudinal versus a KDOS from Siemens which is the XY modulation. So let's look at the table increment. Table increment is the distance traveled by the table in, in 360 degree rotation of extra tube and this is measured in millimeters. And different vendors call it either interval, increment, table feed or uh, feed or couch movement. And then we have table feed. This is the distance traveled by the table in one 360 degree rotation in a helical mode. And different vendors call it either speed, table speed or as you can see Hitachi is calling table feed as table speed. So it can be a little bit confusing and it's important to know these terms and that there is a glossary available when we try to compare any of these terms. Next is rotation time, also known as exposure time or the gantry rotation time. This is um, a time taken by the tube and the detector assembly to complete one 360 degree rotation. The next parameter is uh, helical pitch. For a single slice CT, pitch is defined by the distance traveled by the table in one 360 degree rotation and divided by the total collimated beam width. Um, for a multi-slice CT, pitch gets a little bit complicated and where we say is pitch is defined as the distance traveled by the CT table in one 360 degree rotation divided by the selected detector widths. So in a multi-slice CT, if we know the beam collimation and if we know the number of detectors, we can calculate the detector collimation by dividing these two numbers. And almost all the vendors consistently call them pitch. Next we have the detector arrays, which is the number of detectors available in the matrix. It could be a fixed type where all the detectors are of the same size or it could be variable. And in the variable types we have one is a full extent of detector matrix which is the full coverage and there is a sub millimeter detector which is the central detectors that are thinner or finer detectors. Now next parameter we look at is the detector configuration. This describes the number of data channel being used in a longitudinal axis of a patient multiplied by the effective detector row thickness of individual data channel. So for example, over here we have 16 uh, multiplied by thickness of a detector is 1.25 giving us a 20 millimeter Z axis coverage. And when we take 16 multiplied by thinner detectors, that's 0.625, it gives us a 10 millimeter Z axis coverage. Now let's look at slice thickness. Slice thickness is defined as the nominal width of the reconstructed image in the longitudinal axis measured in millimeters. And almost all vendors call them as thickness or slice thickness or image thickness. Then we have slice interval, which is defined as the distance between the two consecutive reconstructed images, again measured in millimeters, and almost the same terminology as interval or increment. Now let's look at the dynamic scan mode. There's a single detector width, where basically the same anatomical landmark is imaged at several time points while the table remains stationary. With the radiation exposure can be either continuous or intermittent and uh, in multiple detector width, the same anatomical landmark is imaged at multiple time points where the table moves to and fro between the selected start and the end location in order to image a region wider than the detector. And different vendors call it by different name. GE calls it a cine mode um, for single detector width or shuttle mode in multi and so Philips calls it CCT or JOG. Hitachi calls it dynamic. Siemens called it dyne multi or dyne serial, likewise. And the next parameter to look at is the field of view, where we have the acquisition field of view. This is the diameter of the circular region within the scan plane over which the projection data are collected. So although the raw data can be acquired more than the scan field of view too. So basically acquisition or scan field of view is almost the similar. 
So we have, when we have a smaller scan field of view, we have higher spatial resolution. And the next parameter is the reconstructed field of view or the display field of view. This determines how the reconstructed data would be displayed. So if we have a larger DFOV than the scan field of view, we have a more zoom factor than one and it blurs the images as we zoom higher. Next, a few parameters for contrast media. One is bolus tracking. This is a feature to automatically initiate a prescribed scan when a threshold level of contrast media enhancement is reached at a specified region of interest. GE calls it smart prep. Philips calls it bolus tracking. Hitachi calls it predict scan. Siemens calls it scare bolus. And Toshiba calls it show stat. And the next parameter is the test bolus. This is basically the scan mode used to measure the contrast transit time using a small injection of contrast media. Philips calls it time lapse and Siemens calls it time bolus. The next parameter to look at is the reconstruction techniques. As we know that there are several new techniques coming in the market now, so it's important to know, understand what the definition of these techniques are. So let's look at what is image filters. Image filters is a technique used to alter the image sharpness or smoothness in the image space. And this is commonly known as noise reduction filters. Then we have analytical image reconstruction. This is commonly available in all scanner, which is the standard or the conventional. So any of the scanners, if you're using presently, have filtered back projection on it. So what is filtered back projection? This is an image reconstruction algorithm, which projects, which basically back projects the sinogram to the 2D image domain, keeping few workable assumptions. So it's a fast technique, and it's, it has been serving as well for the past 40 years. Then we have this newer or iterative image reconstruction techniques. So what are these techniques? This is image reconstruction algorithm, which incorporates better, better mathematical CT model, and it iterates in few loops to reduce the inconsistencies in the image reconstruction. There's another feature on the scanner, which is called the kernel, or commonly known as algorithms or filters. So what are these features? So basically, this is a feature on the scanner which influences the smoothness or the sharpness of the image. And typically, we use this filter before the image is acquired on the scan. So as in, for example, Siemens have this uh, set of uh, kernels. G calls them algorithm. Then we have from Philips as reconstruction filter. And then from Toshiba, it's called filter convolution. And if you look at the Siemens kernel, they're basically uh, various numbers for body and head starting from B10 all the way to B90. And G calls them either smooth, standard, detail, bone, bone plus, or edge, which is pretty intuitive by the name itself that if we use an edge filter, we'll get a uh, less, uh, sharper edges and less noise. And then from Philips, we have reconstruction filters where they're bent into three different categories, either standard, high, or ultra high. And then they have further nomenclature in each filters. Whereas Toshiba has calls them as filter convolution. And they again also have for body and uh, without beam hardening correction. So, so the basic message from this is it's important to know that the kernel definitions and which part of the spectrum the kernel lies because the image noise can be lower or higher based on which kernel we have selected. Thank you.